everyone. I'm Nikki on the design team at Cat Scrappiness. Today we are going to look at some inlaid die cutting techniques. I will list everything that we use in the description so you don't have to keep up with these all these wonderful embellishments. Um, I also want to make sure if you haven't done it yet, hit like and subscribe to the channel so you can see all the new products. So we are going to be making this A2 sunburst die and we're going to do inlaid die cutting. I have some tips and tricks for that. So I'm going to show you how I made this cool rainbow card. Here's what the final looks like just to give you a little reference. We're going to be using the Spellbinders Platinum 6 die cutting machine. You can use any machine but I really like how this embosses and I'm going to use this die and emboss the die. So I'm going to show you the setup for that on the Spellbinders and then why I'm doing that. So to emboss this die we're going to use our bottom platform then our die with blade facing up, then the paper, and then this tan embossing mat, and then what they call the embossing plate, which is the kind of purplish blue plate. And we're going to run it through and I'll show you how that comes out and how that's going to help us with this inlaid die cutting technique. So when it comes out of the machine, you pull it out and you've got this piece of paper that has the impression. The reason I do this is because to me, this makes it so much easier to figure out where your pieces are going to go. You can glue them to that. It also raises them up a little bit, which gives it even more dimension. So I highly suggest doing that. The next plan is to cut this out on a regular die cutting machine. I usually use my Gemini for the die cutting just because Spellbinders, I love their embossing, but a lot of times with my arm, I don't know if y'all remember, my arm is hurt. It's really hard to roll things through that Spellbinder, so I'm going to put this on a Gemini. But before I do it, I'm going to tape it down and I'm going to number. So you could do this after you bring it out of the machine, which is probably a better idea because you're going to have to erase these that are on the front of the thing. But I just like the idea of numbering your pieces because these pieces are not interchangeable. They're all different sizes and you're going to want to lay this back out like a puzzle. So it helps to have that. So what I did is I labeled on the front because it's hard to make sure you've got it on the piece on the back. So I label on the front and then I'm going to go through and I will switch that to the back once I've cut out the pieces. Like I said, you could just cut the pieces out and try to number them from there, but I tend to have this happen where things just fall out and I have to end up putting the pieces back together again anyway. And so I just erase my pieces and put my number on the back of the piece so I can ink blend it. Another reason to number your pieces is so that you can make sure when you're picking out your colors that you're going to ink blend for the rainbow, that you have the right amount and that you're starting and it makes sense. So with this, I'd already pre-counted, but this has 18 pieces. So I'm going to use six colors and do three of each color. So that just makes it really nice and even. Some dies that have pieces like this will have an odd number. So you've got to decide how you're going to start and what makes the most sense for you. But this piece, luckily from Cat Scrappiness, has an even number that's going to work great for a rainbow. The other reason I label the front is because I like to go through and put my little pieces in a stack of what color they're going to be. So we know number one is going to go with number seven. So you've got six colors in our rainbow. So we need the number seven piece and I can stick that in its pile. And I go through and I do this on all of the numbers so that I've got piles of the correct color. So once I've got all of my piles together, I'm going to show you next all the colors that we're going to use in our rainbow. A little bit of ink blending, but mainly focus on how we're going to get this inlaid die cutting piece back together. I'll list all these colors for you, but I wanted you to see what I've picked and how those embellishments go with it. So I took some time and really um, tried to decide what would work best with these embellishments. And here's what I've come up with. Spun sugar, dried marigold, scattered straw, shabby shutters, speckled egg, and milled lavender. And here are the mixes that they work with. So these are all new releases, the passion pink, cantaloupe, lemon yellow, pastel green, sky blue, and iris. I'm going to take you through what I did with spun sugar. So like I said, I put, I flipped all these pieces over and put their numbers on the back. It's pretty easy to tell which sides front and back. I used some Bristol smooth paper and also it just, um, 
as they cut them out, they almost kind of curve down versus curving up. I don't know if that makes sense, but you can tell what's the front and what's the back. And then I'm going to use a really good eraser and erase the front. So I had no trouble with this and I used a regular pencil and this light mono eraser. You could use your mono sand eraser. I just didn't want to disturb the finish of the paper. So I feel like a regular eraser is a little bit better than one of the sand ones, especially since you're about to ink blend over it. So then I ink blended. I'm going to use this one first, which is the sponge sugar, and just show you what I did. So I still have a hurt right arm, so I'm going to switch this to my left arm. So this is proof that this ink blending is very easy. Um, I tried to make it darker at the top and lighten it down towards the bottom. Um, I just love doing an ombre look, and I kind of feel like having it lighter towards the middle looks kind of cool with the sun ray. Of course, you're going to be putting some embellishments there, so it may not matter at all. Um, but that's just kind of what I did. I um, did the best I could with the left arm, and I think it turned out great. Let's get to how we put this together. So you have two options. You can directly glue this piece right onto your other one, and that looks nice, and that embossing kind of lifts up the ink part. But I like doing it with foam tape because it gives that little gap which just gives you those subtle shadows and looks really cool. So I'm going to foam tape the whole back of the top and then we'll move to getting um, all the pieces together. Remember how we said we've got piles of the numbers that go together? So this makes it really easy to put together. Like I said, I do have numbers on the back so you can double check your number but having them in the rainbow order that they're gonna go on is really nice. So I use a little bit of liquid glue. I'm using Gina K Connect, and this glue allows you to move things around, and I think that you need a glue that you've got a little bit of time to adjust, because if you are type A like I am, I want this to line up perfectly, and it really does make a difference if you've got it right on the area that it goes when you put the top panel on. If you're off a little bit, you're gonna see some white, so you really wanna take your time with that, and like I said, I'm, I'm looking, even now, even though I've got them numbered and I've got them in color piles, I still need to make sure I've got the right piece. So you see me counting and looking. Um, this is a time consuming project, but it looks so good when it's done. So definitely worth trying. So my next tip, I guess, would be go ahead and lay everything out in your number order like I've got here, at least in piles, and use an adhesive that is that you're able to move. I zoom ahead and show you what it looks like with all these pieces. I mean, you could even leave the top off this and it would still look really cool. So I've got all my pieces on here. I'm double checking that they're all lined up and then I'm gonna hold my top that's, I've already got foam tape on it, but I'm just gonna hold it over and make sure I don't need to move anything around that I'm not seeing any white spaces. So here's the top part and it looks like I've got it lined up great. So I'm gonna start adding my embellishments want to keep this uniform so once you've decided how many you're going to add into each area it is good to these packs come with lots of different sizes so i like to use the triangle trays that cat sells and i like to pick out the sizes that i'm going to use for the next three tabs and that way i have them there and ready and i'm not accidentally picking the wrong size and gluing it on i'm going to use a different kind of glue for this so i'm going to use the bare Barely art glue and the reason is that it has a finer tip than my Gina K connect glue and that really makes sticking on very small embellishments easy. I love watching things go on. I know I sped this up that are in rainbow order and just adding little pieces to your project. I may have to create a reel or something out of this. So make sure you check my info below and I'll put that on Instagram hopefully. So I'm going to move on to the final parts of the card. If you have questions or anything, make sure you put them in the comments below. I will pay attention to those and try to answer any questions that you have. All the links will be listed below. Please go through those links if you're thinking of going shopping today. That gives me a small commission and helps support me. All my info is below, and I had a great time being with you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this card. Hit that subscribe button. Thanks. Bye.